Welcome to the fourth part of the Keyhole software tutorial on ext.js single page applications. In the previous tutorial, we went over the controller that controls the view you see in front of you. And in this tutorial, we'll go over the ext.js representation of the view that is on the screen right now. So if I switch over to my IDE, you can see that the configuration looks a little bit different than the controller. There's no methods in here. There's no really high-level configs. Everything you can see here on the screen is very cut and dry, um, very one-to-one. -one. There's no real ambiguity, and there's no real additional functionality that's added in. Um, views in ext.js are best if they are just configuration options, and the view is the one that just is as simple as possible. Um, like I said in the previous tutorial, it's very easy to start cluttering your views because the ext.js doesn't really have the ability to rein in um, some of the things that you can do on here. So as you're looking through your views, you'll notice that you know, no methods, really nothing else except configs, and I leave all of the additional functionality to my controller. In other languages, this is a little bit easier to enforce. In ext.js, it's just a habit that needs to be developed. Your controller is the one that should have all of the methods do all the special things, but your view is the one that is just a clean and cut configuration. So with that preface, the define looks kind of similar to where I pass up the name of the class that I want to create, and then I tell it which ext.js class it should extend. In this case, I chose a grid panel because it has the binding of the models with the view and it displays it in columns, um, sort of like an Excel spreadsheet. The title that I gave it is Application Users, which as you can see is what's here on the screen. Next thing is Columns. Columns is an array of configs. Um, the ext.js documentation is very, very good for grids. Um, Grids and forms were actually one of the first things that ext.js came out with, and it's one of the things that really made it famous and helped it gain its initial popularity. There's a lot of different config options that you can put in these columns. We tried to just put in the most simple ones to show what exactly it takes to just get a page up and running. So the text is what goes in the header. The width is how wide the column should be. Um, ext.js doesn't really have a notion of auto fit like Excel does. Instead, you have to either say, hey, this is the fixed width, and if the data goes beyond that, it'll be truncated. Or you can do this flex one and say, this is going to take up as much space as possible. If the data goes beyond that, it's also going to be truncated, but at least it's not sort of a, a fixed, uh, a definite width like these other two are. Um, we tried to do this to show sort of the different range of configurations that you can do. Um, in order to get a view working correctly, it's going to take a lot of experimentation. And it's going to be something that eventually over time, you'll develop patterns on. And you'll be able to say, hey, you know, this configuration option works better than others. This is what I'm going to go to. If I need to change it, I will. But this is sort of my first pass. Um, after I do all my columns. I then do my docked items. The docked items are the buttons that show up at the top of my grid. And you'll notice that they have these X type buttons. X type in ext terms says a shortcut to class that I'm defined. So for instance, if I wanted to not necessarily define the whole class name when I use this view. What I could say is x type grid, and the framework can know, oh, this is the exact class that I'm referencing. It also allows for a little bit of lazy loading because I don't have to manually create the class. Um, I give my buttons texts and IDs so that I can uniquely identify them in my controller. So in this tutorial, we've gone over what the view looks like or the grid. And in the next tutorial, we'll go over what the controller looks like or the edit window that comes up when I click on the add or edit buttons.